why is intersectionality important in our fight against bias and discrimination? Intersectionality is really important in our fight against bias and discrimination because it's important to to identify different aspects, you know, the intersections of our identity. So, for example, for myself, you know, I'm a woman, so that's one one uh, intersection. I'm I'm black, so that's race as an intersection, and um, I'm a lesbian, so that's my sexuality together so those three intersections is important for people to um understand where we're coming from and that's why it's all tied into lived experience because if you if you understand people and different identities and backgrounds and lived experience you can actually when you're problem solving you can actually look at the whole person Mm -hmm. Mm. be able to um fight discrimination Mm. because it's not just one aspect of somebody's personality you know Mm -hmm. and identity Mm -hmm. it's huge it's huge but also it's also very simple Mm. and And I say and I say that actually not that it's very simple Mm. because it's obviously a huge ongoing Mm -hmm. issue but it's simple because we need to take a compassionate Mm -hmm. uh, and biased aware approach when dealing with people Mm. and different communities and understanding the nuances when it comes to identity. What inspired you to establish the Poetry LGBT Open Mic Night? Wow, I love Poetry for LGBT Open Mic Night. That's my, that's my, my baby. Outside of work, that space is nourishing. Mm-hmm. It's nourishing. I created Poetry for LGBT because I identified a need in London in January 2015. We needed, there was already one um, LGBT poetry event called Insight, but we needed another one. Mm-hmm. Insight was very white and we needed one that was more diverse. We needed one that was more inclusive. We needed a poetry LGBT open mic night that was um, a place where you can find community and belonging and feel accepted and come as you are and know that it's okay. Brilliant. And it's such a brilliant space. You know, it's been going on the first Sunday of every month now for seven years. That's quite an achievement actually for an open mic night. Mm -hmm. And we have so many different people, you know, coming on the stage and sharing their thoughts and their feelings and their poetry and their emotions. And it's it's such a space to, uh, it's such a welcoming space to actually explore who you are Mm -hmm. and be, unapologetically yourself Mm. it's one of those yeah it's one of those events that you'd have to be there to to experience the Mm. the atmosphere and um, I've I've tried my best to make it as welcoming and inclusive and also fun we also have to you know put a bit of fun in there as well because poetry sometimes can be a bit serious Mm -hmm. and the reason why poetry lgbt is important is because the lgbt community experience a lot of challenges and we need spaces where we can be creative we need spaces where we can collaborate and network and and be ourselves mm. and poetry lgbt is all of that is it's that space where mm. there's just no judgment or discrimination in that space and we need more spaces like that how can businesses and organizations support their lgbtq plus employees by organizations can support their employees, all of their employees, not just the LGBT ones, the disabled ones, the uh, religious ones, you know, the diverse ones, 
you know, organizations can support their employees by creating spaces where their employees feel like they belong there. Their employees wake up and they think, I want to go to work today. They're getting dressed and doing their hair and skipping and jumping, getting ready to go to work. Because we spend so much time at work. And those small, those small steps to, to let people know that they're welcome there. Like for me, when I used to work in the NHS and they brought out these rainbow lanyards and the pin badges and stuff, I love that. Mm. I love that because it, it just, it wasn't just a token gesture. It was just more and more people were wearing the lanyards. And every time I saw one, I felt like I belong here. Mm. And that was to me, that was one small step that made a big difference to me. Mm. But yeah, I think there's lots that organizations can do. Like I don't have the answers, mm. but what I can say is that organizations need to think about how uncomfortable it, it feels for them as individuals, you know, the, the decision makers, if they think about themselves and how uncomfortable it feels for them to be in a space where they don't feel welcome or they don't belong there or they don't actually want to go there mm -hmm. and think actually what would make that better?